Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Behind the enormous power of aircraft carriers are years of technological development driven by the limitations a vessel of this type can have. This is what has happened with its flying deck, which, being shorter than a traditional runway, has forced the implementation of methods that allow planes to take off. This is how catapult systems were developed to accelerate airplanes to their takeoff speed rapidly. Starting with hydraulic systems were replaced after the Second World War with steam catapults that used this gas to move the piston that drives the shuttle along the track. Since then, these systems have evolved and aircraft carriers have improved their operations, having up to four catapult systems to quickly launch various aircraft, as occurs with the Nimitz class. Usually, the launch procedures are similar on all aircraft carriers, with slight variations according to the propulsion system used. Initially, the planes are guided to the rear of the runway, where operators hook the aircraft to the catapult launch bar in the front of the nose gear and to the hold back bar in the rear which is responsible for releasing the aircraft once the catapult has reached the required load. Meanwhile, the jet blast deflectors rise from the flight deck to protect the operators and equipment from the aircraft's engine thrust. At the same time, the boilers at the bottom of the boat generate steam that is directed to the cylinders of the catapult system. Once they have reached the necessary pressure, the shuttle is released along the aircraft to accelerate. Although the use of the steam catapult system has been reliable for decades, in recent years, a technology has been developed focused on improving the efficiency and speed of launchers on flight decks. This is the EMALS, or Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, which uses a linear induction motor to generate the impulse that accelerates the plane. This consists of a row of stator coils along 300 feet that, when energized, generate a magnetic field powerful enough to propel the shuttle through the track and quickly move the aircraft. Due to this technology, the system requires large amounts of energy, which comes from onboard generators that store it kinetically in alternators that rotate at 6,400 RPM. With a power conversion subsystem, the stored energy can be distributed with the appropriate voltage and frequency to generate the necessary forces. Additionally, operators can ensure a fixed acceleration due to the controlled systems implemented throughout the process. With this combination of technologies, EMALS brings great benefits to aircraft carriers and their operations, like a more accurate and smoother acceleration that reduces the stress on aircraft airframes during launch, fewer maintenance cycles, and the ability to launch a broader range of naval aircraft. Its development required several years to achieve its functional state, considering that General Atomics acquired the contract to build the system in the late 1990s. In 2004, the Navy started testing the technology used for the EMALS, 
but full-scale field tests on land began only in the 2010s. During this period, the technology was tested with aircraft commonly used on aircraft carriers, such as the C-2 Greyhound, on wide runways to ensure the plane's safety and everyone working at the test. Thus, the Navy was able to verify the operation of the system and potential problems or characteristics to tune it, thus achieving a smoother integration into the vessels. From these sessions, tests with an aircraft carrier began with the Navy installing the system on the Gerald R. Ford CVN-78. Initially performing launches without load and with dead loads to simulate various aircraft weights and demonstrate the integrity of the catapult. Those tests used four wheeled steel vehicles, weighing up to 80,000 pounds, from EMAL's catapults installed on the flight deck. Then in 2021, the EMALs performed full ship shock trials and aircraft compatibility tests with Super Hornets, Hawkeyes, and Growlers. Those tests had positive results that encouraged the future installation of the system on other vessels, such as the USS John F. Kennedy and USS Enterprise. In addition to the catapult system, aircraft launch operations on aircraft carriers involve other components that together allow these procedures to be done safely and efficiently. For each operation carried out during the process to be done in coordination, the aircraft carrier has an integrated catapult control system. This control station, also called the bubble, protrudes from the floor of the flight deck with a shape similar to that of a hemisphere, which gives it its nickname. It houses the catapult officers, also known as shooters, and operators responsible for launching aircraft. It contains the instrumentation responsible for controlling operations, such as the catapult officer control console and the monitor control console that contains status lights, light switch units for phases of catapult operation, and the piston parameters for the steam catapult systems. Thanks to the location of the bubble, it provides a clear view of the flight deck, so the operators can monitor aircraft alignment, crew positioning, and safety checks. During periods of inactivity, the entire structure can be retracted into the aircraft carrier to protect itself from the environment, especially corrosion from prolonged exposure to seawater or storms. When launching operations begin with aircraft such as the F-35, officers inside the bubble coordinate with operators on the flying deck to follow takeoff protocols, including positioning the aircraft and hooking up to the catapult systems and holdback bar. Totally Additionally, the ICCS communicates with the navigation bridge to ensure that weather conditions are safe for launch, thanks to the radar systems located on top of the boat. While this happens, the officers prepare the launch sequence by controlling the catapult system, verifying the pressure levels of the hydraulic system, steam, or voltage levels in the case of using the EMALs. Once everything is prepared, the control station checks with the pilots to inform them of their imminent departure, releasing the catapult to accelerate the plane. These control operations and protocols are also followed during the aircraft landing process. In this case, 
The aircraft carrier has different technologies that ensure the pilot lands safely on the short runway. In recent years, Aircraft carriers, such as the Gerald R. Ford class or the Nimitz class, have implemented advanced arresting gear. This system uses energy-absorbing water turbines connected to an induction motor that allows better control of the arresting forces. Although it requires less personnel to operate, its complexity requires detailed training to achieve its correct operation. Along with this system, other technological advances have been implemented to improve the landing process as occurs with the Joint Precision Approach and Landing System, or JPALS. Its purpose is to guide pilots during their approach to the aircraft carrier using real-time information given by GPS so aircraft can land safely in any conditions, even at night, reaching accuracies close to one meter. Its first implementation occurred with the tests carried out aboard the USS Abraham Lincoln using F-35C aircraft, which showed positive results that allowed future projections to be implemented on other aircraft. The arrival of technologies, such as steam catapults or emuls, in more recent times, has not overshadowed other solutions that have been around for several decades. Considering the complexity, ongoing running, and maintenance costs behind the catapult system, many countries choose to use ski jump systems to take off aircraft on carriers. This structure is simply an upward curved ramp located on the bow of the carrier, which, due to its design, allows the aircraft to take off at an angle. Since the plane has to reach the required speed to lift off, depending only on its engines and the distance of the flying deck is not long enough, this angle allows the aircraft to get a positive rate of climb and will acquire enough lift to fly. However, in most cases, this system is effective with aircraft specifically designed or modified for short and vertical landing or short takeoff and arrested recovery operations. This means the aircraft must have features like larger wings or thrust vectoring which are common in some fighter jet fighters like the F-35 or the British Sea Harrier. All these systems developed for decades for aircraft carriers only demonstrate how dimensional, economic, or energetic limitations drive the creation of creative and efficient solutions. Seeing complex devices like the e-malls or designs like the ski jump only generates expectations for what will come in the future.
that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.